Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Game Week 7. And we are now in wildcard territory. Some of you may have already wildcarded, some of you may not do it for weeks. But I think there's going to be a lot of engaged managers between now and about Game Week 12 are going to play their wildcards. Probably quite a few around Game Week 10, but some of you may want to or feel like you need to play it now. Or just want a bit of fun. So as I go through the video today, I will be talking a little bit about wildcards and the sort of moves you should consider. And to help you, we coloured the cards last week, so I'm going to remind you what the various colours mean. Now most of the player cards are white. That means no special action. They're a good enough player. I wouldn't have them in the system if I didn't think they're a good enough player. However, there are some extra considerations to be aware of. And there are as follows. If a card is yellow, it's new this week. And I have introduced several players. I've introduced a couple of Aston Villa players. I think three West Ham players and one Nottingham Forest player. Because West Ham and Villa, their games are turning, their fixtures rather. And they're both in for quite a nice run. And whereas last season West Ham most of the season was struggling, we didn't know what West Ham would be like this year. They've actually been pretty solid. And Aston Villa have continued to be quite good. So that's why they're in there. So... When it comes to the wild cards, any players that you see that are yellow are pretty good to buy. You can buy them and be relaxed about buying them. You should be okay. You don't have to buy them on the wild card, but if you're unsure, they're safe to buy. Green is a good buy. So it's good whether you're on a wild card or not. But if you're on a wild card, if you try and have mostly yellow and green players, you're probably going to be all right. Grey is bench fodder. Try to have no more than three grey players in your team. Most of the time these will be sitting on your bench. Sometimes you may be choosing to play them. But normally they're on your bench. They're hopefully going to play. Although I know there's a couple that don't. But generally they're going to play. Blue is sellable soon. There's a handful of players that they're okay to keep just now. But in the next couple of weeks we're probably going to sell them. Orange is sellable now. If a player's orange you can absolutely safely get rid of them. And if they're red, it's just sell them. Even it's okay to take a minus four to sell a red and get in a yellow or a green. That's probably all right to do. So if you are thinking of playing your wild card now, any red or orange players, absolutely fine to get rid of. A blue player you may want to get rid of and concentrate on getting yellow and green players and any white players. And if you're new to this system, you don't know what the, uh, the colours mean, you'll find out soon enough. So hopefully that makes enough sense. There are a couple of players we have to offload this week and there'll be more in the coming weeks because we've got a few too many players. We want to keep the number of players quite small. And there was someone who's doing the system. They got a very good score this week. I think they got 93 actually. And although they're following the system, they said they thought their bench was a bit strong and they're unsure about having those particular players on the bench. And my reckoning is if you get 16 points on a bench boost, it's worth playing your bench boost because that's... Four points for each of the four players, that's 16. And so I did say to them, look, you may want a bench boost, but they decided not to because later in the season there will be some double game weeks and more opportunity. And I think they ended up getting, I wrote it down, yeah, they got 22 points on their bench. So they could have bench boosted and they would have got 105, 115 points. So that would have been a very good score. All right, let's look at the uh, system. So let's look at what the players got that are in the system in game week six. First, the keepers. They got an average of 4.6 and Ramsdale didn't play again. It looks like Ray is going to be first choice. So Ramsdale's one of the players that we're going to want to get rid of. If he's your main keeper, that's at least one player you need to get rid of. Regarding defenders, if you had Newcastle defenders, you did all right. We had a couple of Newcastle defenders in the system. So the first, I'm assuming two defenders from this page, that would have got you an average of 10.6 points. The second page of defenders is only Botman that did anything. So that was an average of 5.2. And there's Bulldog, who we're also going to be offloading, I think, this week. He's not played. I think he must still be injured. For the midfielders, as normal, it's the midfielders that seem to get the most points. And there are so many good midfielders in this game. And whoever you choose, every week there's going to be a very popular midfielder that does well. And there's, like, there's nothing you can do about it. So that's an average of 15.4 for any two of these and the second page of midfielders they still got an average of 12.4 so the chances are your midfield hopefully did all right and the midfielders have actually crept onto a third page uh these were probably sitting on your bench though 
first page of forwards. Haaland only got six. Watkins got nine. But that's because Alvarez was taken off early because Rodri got sent off. So Haaland maybe wasn't getting the service he otherwise could have got. And then the second page of forwards, average 3.3. Alvarez, he was the player that all the other content creators were raving about. You have to get in this week. I didn't get him in. And uh, he only got one point. So, so far, every game week, whoever they've been raving about has not done well. However, that doesn't mean that you want to bank on that system. They've possibly just been unlucky so far. So regarding the goalkeepers, now we're going to look at a bit more in depth of the players. This is very important if you want to make one or two subs or even three subs. It could be worth it, a minus four or a minus eight even. Or if you want to play a wild card. So Edison's on paper got a good chance of clean sheets but Man City are coming up to a stretch of fewer good fixtures so if I was wildcarding I wouldn't get an Edison but he's an okay player. Pope he's a very good choice for a keeper but he is expensive 5.5. Onana for United okay they have kept a couple of clean sheets but we don't know yet what United are going to be like but the next three games are Palace, Brentford, Sheffield United so it could be three clean sheets. Uh, Flecken for Brentford. Brentford have lost a couple of defenders just now, so their attack's not so good and their defence isn't as good. So I'm not so hot on Flecken, but he's he's fine. He might be all right. Johnston for Palace. Pickford for Everton. Okay, Everton's not kept a clean sheet yet, but the next two games are home against Luton and Bournemouth. So he's an all right pick. I've got him at the moment. If I don't wildcard, obviously I'll be playing him this week. If I was wildcarding, I wouldn't be buying Pickford though. Ariola is a new player. He's only 4.2 million, so he's a cheap keeper. He's 0.2 cheaper than Pickford. So if you were wildcarding, you may rather get Ariola to someone like Pickford because he's a bit cheaper, but you wouldn't have to. Pope and Ariola would be a good pair here if you were wildcarding. And then Turner's cheap keeper plays each week. He's 4 million. And then if you've got Ramsdale, he's red. He's out of here. So for the defenders... Now, Trent's currently marked as injured, but he may be back for the weekend. If you buy him now on a wild card, you're risking he won't play for the next couple of game weeks. So you may want to get someone else in. Uh, but equally, he could do well. He could play and do well. But he, the next two games are against Tottenham and then Brighton, and they're both away. So clean sheet's unlikely for Liverpool. Trippier, if you can afford to get him in, he's definitely worth having. Robertson's a bit like a cheaper version of Trent. Obviously not as good, but he is currently fit, so he can play at the moment. Chilwell's going to be out of here soon. As Stupinan's next three games are away to Villa, home to Liverpool, away to Man City. Really unlikely to get clean sheets. Could get an assist in one of those games. But after that, from Fulham onwards, the games are very good for Brighton. And then Saliba, Arsenal, they're a bit of a bumpy fixture on coming up, but they could get a clean sheet in any game. So he's solid, he's all right. A Kanji, as long as he plays, he could get points. And Anderson, he's just bench fodder. If you're wildcarding, don't get Anderson. Even though he's Luton, I'm not clear why he didn't play last game week. He didn't play. So although he's marked as having a double game week, I'm assuming he's not going to be playing. So don't buy uh, Anderson. He's currently in my team, but the way I've got my team set at the moment, he's actually sitting on the bench despite the double. Uh, second page defenders, Poro's all right. They've got some good fixtures coming up from next game week. So these are two Tottenham defenders at the moment on the page. They're at home to Liverpool. Chance of an attacking return. Probably won't keep a clean sheet. But after that, they've got a nice fixture on. The next three after that, they're playing Luton, Fulham, Palace. Could be clean sheets. Could be assists for these boys. Botman, only 4.7. Absolutely worth getting. Obviously, it's up to you if you're going to get one, two or three Newcastle people at the back. You should definitely have at least one. Two's perfectly fine. Three's a bit of a fun gamble. So that's Pope in goal, Trippier and then Botman. Cash is a new entry. He's a very attacking defender for Villa. Villa have some nice fixtures coming up. They're at home to Brighton this week. And as I may have mentioned, Brighton have so far scored every game and they've also conceded every game. So if you bought Cash in this week, you'd be thinking it's because he's got a chance of an attacking return. But after that there's a reasonable chance of clean sheets as well as attacking returns. So he's very good. Gabriel, another solid Arsenal defender. Pinnock, because of injuries, Brentford really aren't as good as they were at the end of last season, beginning of this season. So I think Pinnock may be out of here soon. Colwell's going to be out of here soon, probably. 
players bench fodder. Now he's currently in my team, but I've currently got him on his bench on the bench. He's probably going to play both games, and he's probably going to get a total of three or four points. And I would rather play one of my other defenders. But we'll see the benching order later. And then Bulldog, if you've got him, he's out of here. Regarding the midfielders, Salah, he's going to be difficult to get in. If you wanted Salah and Trippier and Haaland and Pope, it's going to be very difficult to get with these players in. However, Salah is a very good player to get in. We've had six game weeks so far and he scored at least five points in every game week. The last two game weeks he actually got ten points. Sun is a new entry. It looks like he's going to be playing as the striker. He is at the moment which means he's got a good chance of getting points. So these two are playing each other this coming game weekend. They could both get a couple of goals, or they obviously could both do nothing. It's, it's hard to say, but neither of them have a great defence, so there's a good chance of them getting points. And then after this week, Tottenham do have a good run. The only slight downside with Sun, apart from his expensive 9.2 million, is Madison's currently marked flagged as being injured. And Madison's very good at providing the assists, for Sun. So if Madison doesn't play, I think Sun's slightly less powerful. Um, Rashford, Man United have been disappointing, but on paper they should be right. The next three games are certainly good for him. Saka, he went off injured. He's currently flagged. We don't know if he's fit or not, but loads of people own Saka. So if you don't have him and he does well, you're going to suffer. But this is a game about fun and we're only going for top 5%. It should be you can pick any combination of yellows and greens from this lot and some whites and you should do all right. Odegaard, he's all right. Fernandez, he scored a fantastic goal. Now, I sold Saka for Fernandez a couple of weeks ago. This weekend just gone. Saka got two goals. Fernandez got one. Fernandez got a brilliant goal. Saka's first goal was a deflection and had it not deflected, the keeper probably would have stopped it. And the second goal was a penalty. So... Yes, Saka got two goals, but perhaps he was a bit lucky to get two goals. And yes, I am being biased. Madison, he's currently flagged. But if he's only off for one week, he's worth having. And if by the time you do a wild card, if you do, and he's not flagged, he's worth having. Martinelli, I think he's currently flagged as injured, but Arsenal's fixtures aren't great anyway. He's fine to offload. Now, you can only have five midfielders. And we've got seven good ones on the screen and you can't afford all of them. We're going to look at some other ones now. So it's on the one hand, it's a real problem who you're going to miss out. But on the other hand, it doesn't really matter because if you hold the midfielders with the view of holding them for several weeks and giving them a chance, it doesn't matter that you have the wrong midfielders this week because they could be the right midfielders next week. Same for any position. So the second page of midfielders, we have Foden. He's solid. He's still playing at the moment. Sterling we will be offloading him soon. If, you, if you've got him, you want to keep him, that's fine. But he's done nothing the last three game weeks. On paper, he should be good. But Chelsea are really struggling just now. Bowen's a new entry. 7.1 million West Ham midfielder. Very attacking. Good chance of scoring points. Embremo, not so good. Brentford, they're struggling. I have Embremo and I have Visser for Brentford. And I'm partly thinking of wildcarding this week because I got two Chelsea boys, two Brentford boys, and I just feel very exposed. I could leave it one more week, but my honest thing is I really don't know if I'm wildcarding yet this week. Diaby, he's down as a midfielder, but he plays as a striker for Villa. He's got a reasonably good chance of getting points. Matoma, next three games aren't great, but he's just amazingly brilliant. He can score against anyone. Ward-Prowse, another new entry. So there's three new entries on this page. Um... Cheaper version of Bowen. He's very good at set pieces. He's Ward Prowse has a good chance of getting five or six points a game. Sometimes it'd be two or three. Bowen's got a good chance of getting seven points or ten points. So Bowen will probably have more weeks than Ward Prowse that are scoring high, but he's probably going to have more weeks that are only two or three points as well. So it kind of depends what you want to do with those. You don't have to get any of these players, of course, but because there are quite a few cheapest midfielders you can get, by choosing from this page, you can probably get Haaland, Salah, Trippier, and then maybe pick three or even four from this page, maybe three. And then Eze, he's in the system. He's all right. He can still get some points. And on the third page, Gibbs White, he's great. He's kind of bench fodder, but he can do stuff. Casemiro, 
He's scored quite a lot of goals so far this season, just not in the Premiership. But in Cup games and non-Premiership games, he's been doing really, really well. So I could see him getting a few 10-pointers between now and the end of the season. But he takes up a Man United spot. There's other Man United players you may rather have. And more importantly, he's a midfielder. There are five cheap midfielders, slightly more expensive than him, that are better than him in the system at the moment. But if you've got him, don't worry about having him. And Lerma, we're going to have to offload him soon. I think he's injured. Nakamba, although he's got a double game week, I suspect he's going to get between three and six points this week. He's currently in my team, but he's actually currently on my bench. I just don't fancy playing him. And then the forwards, Haaland. Now, I've not marked him as green, but you really, really should have him, but you don't have to. It's not mandatory. But if you want to finish in the top 5%, you really should choose Haaland. But there may be enough other good players in the system that the only way you can afford all the players you want is to not have Haaland. If you don't have Haaland, you're taking a big, big risk. Watkins, marked him as green. Villa have got a very nice set of run, run of fixtures coming up. Jesus is back. He came back, I think, last week or the week before. It'd be good to see what he does, but he's 7.9 million. He's certainly a good player. Wilson, we could have gone Wilson or Isaac at the beginning of the season. We went with Wilson. He was clearly the better choice. He keeps getting points. Darwin at 7.4. He's a gamble, but the last few game weeks he has been starting and he has been scoring points. The next two fixtures aren't great. They're way to Tottenham and way to Brighton. Both those sides can leak goals. But you're taking a risk if you buy Darwin. I am tempted to get Darwin on a wild card, I have to admit, but I am a bit stupid. Jackson, he's out of here. He's ne- In six games, he's got five yellow cards, so he misses a game week anyway. But he's been awful. So he's going to be out of our system next week. The cheaper forwards. Alvarez, at the moment, he's playing all the time. He's solid. He's getting good points. Arione for Forrest. He's consistently getting points. Obviously not every week, but nearly every week he's getting five, six, seven points. He's not got any massive returns yet, but he's home to Brentford. Home games are good. Away to Palace. Home to Luton. So the next three are certainly good. So this is a a nice place you could save some money. Solanke, he's been good and consistent, getting moderately good points all the time. Vissa, Brentford have got issues. I've got Vissa. I'm tempted to offload him, even though he's away to Forest this week. I'm just thinking, I'm just not into Brentford now anymore. Morris, I think we introduced him last week. He's got a double game week this week. He's probably going to be the second most captained person, I should think. And he does get points on and off. So he's only 5.5 million. So you could buy him. But after this week, he may be permanently on your bench. Yao Pedro, he's a massive minutes risk. He's worth getting rid of now or very soon if you've got him. Adibio, even though he's Luton, he's probably going to be on your bench this week, even though it's a double game week. But he may play, he may get points. Mubama, he's not doing things. If you're wild carding, you've got any orange players, remember, get rid of them. And this may not be the best game week for you to wild card. If you've only got a couple of orange and or red players, you're probably going to be all right. But if you've got three or four or more, or you just want to spruce things up a bit, it's absolutely fine to wild card this week. Now the goalkeeper bench order. The first keeper you see that you have goes on your bench, which means your second goalkeeper is the one you're playing. I think I've not got Ramsdale in this because you should have sold him. So, And if you have still got him because you haven't sold him, for whatever reason, put him on your bench. So Crystal Palace, Johnston, he's on your bench. If you haven't got him but you've got Flecken, I suggest he's on your bench. If you have neither of those but you have Turner, put him on your bench. But Forrest are quite good at home, so I wouldn't be nervous about playing Turner. However, if you've got Pickford, he's at home to Luton and he's got more chance of a clean sheet. Ariola's home to Sheffield United, a reasonably good chance of a clean sheet. Edison, a good chance of a clean sheet against anyone. They're away to Wolves. Onana, home to Palace. And then Pope, home to Burnley. So there's a reasonably good chance that goalkeepers are going to be scoring points for players, managers this coming game week. So keepers are good. Now for the rest of the players, and I have to put my glasses on to be able to read this. All right, we're now going to look at The other players to put on your bench, the first player you see I'm suggesting is position number three in your bench. Second player you've got that you see is position two, third one position one. Now a good number of these players are probably going to get some decent scores this week. 
there's nothing we can do about it. Without seeing your team, I wouldn't suggest bench boosting this week. I'm just saying there are probably going to be some good scores here. Obviously, you could bench boost if you wanted to, but I probably wouldn't. So Mubama for West Ham, then Lerma, Anderson, even though Anderson's got a double game week. Gel Pedro, Colwill, Pinnock, Eze, Solanke, Adebayo, even though he's got a double game week. Chilwell. The thing with Chilwell is he's we just don't know he's gonna get 60 minutes. So even when even if Chelsea keep a clean sheet, he may not get any points for it, but he may be on the pitch for the last half hour. Nakamba's got a double game week, but as with Anderson and Adebayo, you've probably got other players that have got a good chance of getting more points. Bayer for Burnley, Sterling, Mbremo, Casemiro, Gibbs White, Martinelli, a Stupinan, Cash, Akanji, Visser, Robertson, Trent Alexander Arnold, Porro, Udogi, Gabriel, and Saliba. And hopefully, you've got three players on your bench long before now. But just in case you still haven't got three players on your bench, Darwin on your bench, then Madison, Ariani, Diaby, Watkins, Odegaard, Ward Prowse, Jesus and Bowen. And I've missed a few other players out that you will be playing. Regarding captaincy, Haaland is the suggested guy to put the old mule hat on. He's going to be the most captain player. If you don't captain him, and he does well, he's going to really hurt you. If you wildcard and don't have him and he does well, you're going to be in an awful lot of pain. He could get 20 points against Wolves. Captain, that's 40 points. You're unlikely to be able to make it out with the rest of your team. That said, I am thinking of wildcarding, and I am thinking about going about Haaland, but you don't want to do what I do because it's stupid, and I may not do it anyway. Morris, he's going to be the second most captained player I suspect because he's got a double game week and Luton are playing Everton and Burnley so there's a chance of a return there. Trippier for Newcastle you could captain him if you wanted to at home to Burnley chance a clean sheet could get an assist. Salah away to Tottenham but Tottenham do leak goals so he may get some points. Fernandez, they got a nice home game and then Foden because he does seem to do quite well however I would not captain and vice captain Foden and Haaland because the game could randomly get postponed. So I'd suggest, if you can, make one of these captain. should be Haaland, but do what you want. Make another one vice-captain. Um, if you haven't got two of these players, then just pick one of the players that's looking good from what we said. If you've got a green player or yellow player, they would be right for vice-captain this week. And in case you're wondering about the background, <laughs> I saw a random news story today about antimatter. And you, you get these crazy things in the news like um, antimatter. They've done this new discovery. Oh, it's going to help decide how the universe was formed. And there's a comet. They've, if you saw it in the news, they've taken something off of a comet recently. I think it's either landing soon or has landed. And from the few bits of rock or gravel inside the capsule they've got, they're going to be able to tell the origins of the universe. And every time they spend billions on something, it's so they can tell the origins of the universe. And I just think it's stupid. We're on a massive planet here. They could look at this planet if they want to get some clues. How are they going to get clues from the origin of the universe from a few bits of gravel? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it sounds good, but I don't think it is at all. Anyway, so this is a football smashing through time and space in the cosmos. Sorry, sorry for such an, such an obscure picture. <laughs> Oh, and there we have it. Uh, I'm sorry the videos are so long. I do try to keep them short, but we're in wildcard territory. But if you don't like the videos being so long, just skip through YouTube, drag the bar along and get to the key points you think could be most useful to you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a good game week. And if you wildcard, I hope you have fun wildcarding. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>